I just finished the third movie for the Fear Street trilogy, and I gotta say, this trilogy as a whole was pretty alright, however, it was just so annoying just hearing people talk about this movie. Like, on my social medias, bro, everybody was telling me, go watch Fear Street, it's so good, bro, you'll love it, the first movie is great. It's not that great. It's it's really not that good. And I think the reason why I guess I don't enjoy it as much as I should is because I kind of had high expectations. So when finishing this trilogy, I just questioned to myself, what was all that hype about? So now I decided to spit facts on the microphone once again as Ty learned to speak on this movie unbiasedly and just look at it with a fresh pair of eyes. And if you do want more videos like this, you know, like movie reviews, let me know down in the comment section below. And let's get right into it, starting with the first movie. Now, Fear Street 1994, I gotta say, was pretty alright. It wasn't good, it wasn't bad, it was just okay. Now, there are two main plots for this story, I guess. It's the main character and her girlfriend's love problems, and the actual scary plot itself, which the scary plot itself, it's fine, it's nothing too crazy. I thought the witch sending out killers was kind of interesting from different times, like one was sent from 1977, and then the one was the modern one that we saw at the beginning of the movie. And that concept was pretty cool. However, anything else that doesn't involve this, aka Dina and Sam's relationship problems, it's so fucking distracting for the movie. And no, it doesn't matter that they're a lesbian couple. I know somebody's gonna say it in the comment section. I know someone's gonna try and make that argument to try and defend this movie, but no. If it were two dudes, if it were two girls, if it were two fucking cows and fucking robot chickens, it doesn't matter. So, Sam moves away because I guess she's scared to face her mom about Dina, her relationship. So I guess her parents just don't like Sam dating Dina. So yeah, that's apparent, along with Sam actually just straight up running away from Dina and living this life of, you know, being a cheerleader, dating this dude. And her and Dina get in a big-ass fight because of this, because Dina's about to give Sam a gift, but now she's mad at Sam for moving on with her life when Dina broke up with her. The whole fucking situation is so stupid, and it gets way worse when Sam not only mentions about Dina's drunk dad, but when Dina also mentions about Sam's mother. And guess what happens when they do this to each other? Sam says to Dina, Well, maybe you're right. And guess what Dina says to Sam? Well, maybe you're right. Like, their relationship problems are so stupid, and when they get together, it's supposed to be like a powerful moment. Like, this is happening as Josh is getting with Kate, symbolizing, you know, everybody's doing their thing. It's so powerful. Well, the thing is, with Josh and Kate, we actually see Josh at the beginning of the movie actually progressing with Kate at first, not even being able to walk up to her to then talking to her, conversing with her, and even kissing her like a goat, and with Dina and Sam, it's already starting out as bullshit, because the whole reason why they're even mad at each other is stupid in itself. And speaking of, Josh, in my opinion, definitely should have been the main character, because he actually relates to the scary shit in the movie. The only thing that Dina relates to is that Sam her ex, or I guess girlfriend by the end of the movie. But what sounds a lot better and consistent, folks? I'm just gonna ask you guys a question. Ex slash girlfriend by the end of the movie, having a connection with the witch because she somehow, after the car crash, touched her grave, or focus the story on the dude who is literally being an incel about this scary conspiracy shit and nobody's believing him. Have Josh seem like the character that nobody is listening to. He already is like this, but if he were in a main character role, it would work so much better. And yeah, Josh is a main character, but not the main main focus. Dina is the main focus with Josh on the side. It should be vice versa. And another thing that shouldn't have happened, Simon's death. I definitely think Simon should have lived, especially since we got to see Kate and Simon bond, so we get to see not only Simon go through Kate's death, but also Josh. And we even see in Simon's foreshadowed death when he talks to Josh, he says that they may die, but Kate sees something in him. And now imagine Josh having to deal with that guilt with his homie, who was homies with that girl in the first place. I don't know, I felt like Josh and Simon could have definitely built up way more of this bro relationship they developed near the end of the movie, which I definitely did enjoy, but I just wish we saw more. And also, there are a lot of inconsistencies in this movie, like, characters just don't die when they should, and not to mention, some of these characters are fucking strong as fuck. Like, this girl Kate fighting a dead guy, stabbed, 
overpowers him and the blade just falls right off not to mention simon puts the dead girl in a chokehold and fucking dina while stabbed mind you and sam's possessed fucking wraps her up with a phone cord a phone cord how are you this build different can you be goku other than those little critiques I had and my little nitpicks, I definitely think this movie is enjoyable. Like, you're not gonna have a miserable time watching this at all, especially with the homies. And I did like the setup for the second one, so I was engaged enough to move on. So I'm going to be giving this a 6.5 out of 10. Now we can move on to the second movie, which I will say is definitely way better than the first one. I feel like it basically removes all the problems that the first one had. It's not killer plus relationship problems, this time it's just full on killer and this movie feels way more fun because of it. I think the only thing you could argue at best is bothering or trying to contend with it being the main plot is Cindy and Ziggy I guess bonding together but that's not really even a main plot line that's kind of like on the side as the plot is going. But essentially we follow our protagonist who's Ziggy but apparently now it's like in the movie they say that she was Cindy but in the movie she's actually Ziggy whatever ziggy gets called a witch and gets pooped on and guess what she's also the same girl who makes the witch mad pretty nice symbolism man also cindy in this movie is also good at going from an uptight loser to literally dying for her sister in the end this is what we call growth motherfucker cindy went from like being mad annoying in the beginning to being an honest goat and not to mention cindy and ziggy they do have their issues but it's not distracting from the main plot like, bro, imagine the same amount of screen time we got for Dina and Sam for Cindy and Ziggy just yelling at each other and Cindy calling Ziggy a monster and Ziggy saying, Well, that's what people say. <laughs> bro, that shit would be so ass, but I'm so glad they learned from the first movie and now there's none of that stuff here. And not to mention the camp setting just gives me Friday the 13th vibes and overall, I just can't hate that. I am biased towards my boy Jason, so having this type of vibe in a movie... I can't go wrong with it, and honestly, I thought this movie was far better than the first one. I'm going to be giving this one a 7.5 to 8 out of 10, guys. I honestly didn't really have any too big issues except for, like, cringy dialogue. And some of the side characters were garbage. Like, I thought Alice was not cool at all, and trying to redeem her near the end when she was just about to die was pretty corny and was just kind of a, oh, let me try and make a sad death moment. But in the end, it was not sad at all, and I didn't really feel anything. And when most characters died, it was either like, oh shit, why would he kill a kid? type of reaction. It's not like my favorite characters are dying, or when someone dies, I'm like, damn, I'm really hurt by that. Except for Cindy's death, which was kind of depressing because we followed Cindy throughout most of the movie, and I actually kind of liked her. Overall, the second one is better than the first one, and doesn't really have too many issues besides some cringy characters and I guess some cringy dialogue, but the killing is fun, and the movie in general is just fun as hell. I can't go wrong with this movie, and so I am going to be giving it a 7.5 out of 10. And now, let's talk about the final one. Now, the third movie is essentially two movies in one, the first half covering the prequel, essentially the events that happened in 1666, and then basically a sequel to 1994. Going into this, I thought this was going to be pretty lame because this was another prequel movie, like I want to see what our characters are doing, but the prequel is actually pretty important because we don't get the full story in the first two movies. And with a third movie covering the origin and the last bits of 1994, I gotta say, this movie is probably my favorite personally. This movie not only had a plot twist that I didn't expect, I did not expect the sheriff really being that involved in the plot at all, however it did make sense and I thought it kind of came together. What I love about the third movie is how it essentially wraps everything up and it explains everything, unlike in the first two movies where it has missing pieces and if you just look at those two movies alone, it's not going to make too much sense. However, when you see all three movies, it makes a lot more sense. And personally, I think the third one just coming to a conclusion like this while also serving a good plot twist is pretty fire. The final battle was also goaded, seeing all the monsters kind of fighting each other was goaded as well. And this movie surprisingly made me like Dina a lot more because of the parallel she had with Sarah. And it was cool how she wasn't like related to her unlike Nick Good, like she was just a normal person with good parallels with Sarah. And I guess the only critiques were I guess the prequel half could have been a little sped up, but honestly I didn't really care because I just thought the eyeball guy was pretty cool and seeing that along with Sarah kind of just being framed was an interesting perspective because throughout this point of the story, we thought she was the main villain this whole time. And yeah, I'm going to be rating this movie a 8 out of 10. Overall, I think I was satisfied with the ending, and if you want to just feel a lot more satisfied, just watch all three movies in one go. 
My name is Tyler, and if you want to see any more movie reviews you would like me to do in the near future, let me know down in the comment section below, and I'll see you all in the next one.